Egypt is not only pyramids and sun-soaked beaches. It is also a country where the economic and political interests of the world's great powers intertwine. The Arab Spring popular uprising in Cairo's Tahira Square in January of 2011 has resulted in the country stumbling towards an uncertain future ever more polarized between Islamist and secular forces. The Arab Republic of Egypt is the most populated country in the Middle East, with around 84 million inhabitants, of which 87% are Muslims and 12% are Coptic Christians. The population is highly urbanized, concentrating along the Nile River and Delta and near the Suez Canal. Sixty percent of Egypt's inhabitants are Filahin, or farmers, who lead humble lives in simple mud-brick houses. Egypt's strategic position gives it control over the Suez Canal, one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. One-tenth of the world's oil supply passes along this waterway each year. The Egyptian economy, in addition to revenue from the Suez Canal, petroleum and agriculture, depends largely on tourism. Every year, up to 10 million people visit the rich historic sites and beach resorts. However, years of internal turmoil have considerably hindered growth, resulting in increasing unemployment, inflation and economic loss. The roots of Egypt's civilization stretch back over four millennia before Christ. The land has seen the rule of Pharaonic dynasties, Hellenistic kings, Roman Caesars and Byzantine emperors. The Arab conquest of the 7th century introduced Egypt to Islam, a culture to which it belongs to the present day. In 1882, the British Empire occupied the region. Egypt gained independence in 1922 when Faud I declared himself king. However, it was not until 1953 that a republic was declared. Egypt remained in turmoil in the second half of the 20th century with conflicts revolving around the Suez Canal and Israel's position in the Middle East. In 1981, during the annual Victory Parade, radical Muslim extremists from Al-Jihad, a Muslim Brotherhood splinter group, assassinated Egypt's President Anwar Sadat. He was succeeded by Vice President Hosni Mubarak, who immediately introduced martial law that remained in force until 2011, when Mubarak's 30-year rule ended with the onset of the Arab Spring. The Muslim Brotherhood, opposed to secularizing tendencies and keen to introduce Sharia law, took over the reins of state in 2012. After a controversial year in office, Mohamed Morsi, Egypt's first democratically elected president, was ousted by the army following nationwide demonstrations. The country seems to be divided between two fractions. Egypt's citizens are struggling for stability and economic recovery as they face an uncertain future. Christianity arrived in Egypt with Mark the Evangelist in the first century. Soon after, Christian monasticism was born. By the end of the fifth century, hundreds of monasteries and thousands of cells and caves adorned the Egyptian desert. Copts, descendants of an ancient people who inhabited the Nile Valley, 
well before the Arab conquest were, and to this day remain, Christian. Orthodox, Catholic and Protestant Copts are united by their devotion to Christ. From a very early age, when a cross is tattooed on their wrist or shoulder, a distinct and enduring sign of their faith. Until the Middle Ages, Copts were a majority in Egypt. Over the years, they have been increasingly discriminated against. Some converted to Islam in order to survive. Those who refused to repudiate their faith became second-class citizens. The appearance of fundamentalist Islam in the 1970s led to successive waves of outright persecution. In 1980, a clause was added to the constitution. Islam is the state religion, Arabic the official language, and Islamic Sharia the main source of its laws. Between 1981 and the present, attacks from fundamentalists on Copts have led to the death of hundreds and the destruction of hundreds of homes, churches and shops. The coming years presage a difficult period for Egypt's Christians. Unable to find work or to cultivate fields, witness to an increasingly dominant Islamic presence with the construction of new mosques every month, while the building of new churches is practically impossible, many Christians search for freedom abroad. Estimates put the number of Christians who have left Egypt since the downfall of Mubarak's regime at around 100,000. Muslims, the Salafists, they think that only Islam should be in Egypt. All Christians uh, must uh, go away. And they asked us, go to Canada, to America, you have uh, all visa. And we told them, no, it is our country, we are staying here because we have a mission to make peace and dialogue with the others and accept the others. And we, we try to do it. Egypt's Christians, our suffering brothers and sisters, not only need our sympathy, but our help, concrete help. We have to think about them often, pray for them, but also support them financially.